Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli top court halts Sheikh Jarrah expulsions. Libya's parliament approves new government. Honduras announces ban on open pit mining. And migrant workers lose millions in pandemic wage theft. In our first story, Israel's Supreme Court has issued a stay on the expulsion of four Palestinian families in Sheikh Jarrah in the occupied East Jerusalem. The families will remain in their homes until a land arrangement over the ownership of the property is settled. In doing so, the court has partially accepted the appeal filed by the Palestinians. However, the families will now be considered protected tenants and will have to pay an annual rent of around $750. This will go into a trust account and transfer to whoever is ultimately granted ownership. Tuesday's ruling is based on similar lines as a proposal made by the court in August. The families rejected the deal because it denied their ownership rights and would have them pay rent to the Nahalat Shimon settler group. The court has now imposed the protected tenant status on Palestinians in its ruling. However, the family's lawyer, Sami Arshed, has said that they will now have a chance to prove their ownership without the looming threat of forced expulsion. The Ministry of Justice will decide on how to settle the ownership rights. Arshid has said that the process has been frozen since 1967 and will not be finalized anytime soon. Dozens of Palestinian families in Sheikh Jarrah are at risk of forced displacement with nine cases still pending in courts. The Jerusalem Magistrates Court indefinitely postponed the expulsion of the Salem family last week. The ruling followed weeks of threats and violent attacks against the family by Israeli forces and settlers. It is also important to note that the jurisdiction of Israeli courts over the occupied Palestinian territories is a violation of international law. In our next story, Libya's East-backed parliament in the city of Tobruk has approved a new government. Prime Minister-designate Fatih Bashaga submitted his proposed 35-member cabinet to the chamber on March 1st. Parliament Speaker Aguila Saleh announced that it was approved by 92 out of 101 legislators present in the House of Representatives. Tuesday's vote has deepened the political crisis in Libya as Interim Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Dabeba has refused to step down. He also rejected Tuesday's vote. Fateh Bashaga was elected Prime Minister by the Parliament on February 10th. The appointment was also welcomed by the Libyan National Army, led by Khalifa Haftar. However, the Beba stated later that he would only hand over power to an elected government. He also proposed to hold elections in June. The Beba was appointed interim Prime Minister by the United Nations-backed Libyan Political Dialogue Forum in 2021. However, after his government failed to hold elections on December 24th, the parliament declared that his mandate had expired. Amid rising uncertainty, Fateh Bashaga has said that he has made arrangements with security and military authorities to set up his government in Tripoli in the West. The capital has recently witnessed mobilizations by armed groups opposed to him. The UN has so far said that it is monitoring the situation and call for peace and stability. The mandate of its mission in Libya is due to expire in two months. And now we look at the government of President Xiomara Castro in Honduras, which has declared a ban on open mining. The Ministry of Mining described extractive exploitation as harmful to the state of Honduras in a statement released this week. It added that mining threatened public health and natural resources and limited access to water as a human right. The government has said that it will proceed with the revision, suspension and cancellation of environmental licenses and concessions. It has also announced the conservation of areas of high ecological value. It is not yet clear if the ban will apply to both new and existing permits for open pit projects. Nevertheless, the decision has been welcomed by water and land defenders and indigenous peoples who have long faced illegal mining on their lands. Honduras has been among the world's most dangerous countries for environmental activists. 
According to Global Witness, 17 people were killed in 2021 alone. Several have been targeted and imprisoned over the years, including the recently freed Guapinol 8. A report by the NGO FOSDE said that the mineral and hydrocarbon extraction and energy generation were changing the geography of Honduras. It found that with the pending mining concessions, the area marked for extraction could increase by 330%. This would be over 560,000 acres of, or 5% of Honduran national territory. And finally, South Asian migrant workers have lost $25 million in wage theft during the COVID-19 pandemic. One worker would have lost wages at a minimum average of over $7,200 in a period of 14 months. These findings are part of a new report by the Migrant Forum in Asia. It is based on findings from the organization's own research, as well as data obtained by the Justice for Wage Theft campaign. The total amount of wages and dues stolen from over 2,000 workers was 19.2 million. These workers hail from India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Nepal and the Philippines. The construction sector was the worst in terms of denying workers their dues. This was followed by domestic workers, manufacturing, hospitality and office staff. The report has urged states to hold private employers accountable for wage theft, arbitrary dismissal and coercive and retaliatory tactics. The Migrant Forum also argues that these cases represent only a fraction of the instances that go unreported. Reports on migrant workers in other parts of the world have shown that they often do not have access to grievance redressal mechanisms. As reported by Quartz, the number of unresolved labor dispute cases between 2019 and 2020 was 6,988. These numbers were only limited to the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.